Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back to a brand new advanced PvP guide. Today I shall be going over the brand new Pictomancer, which is not only extremely fun, this role is also dominating in PvP right now. Playing Pictomancer feels like you're playing every other caster in one job, and at first glance the role can seem rather confusing. Stick with me as we cover abilities and combos, strengths and weaknesses, ending with a full match covering some strategies in a huge 2.6 million round. Thank you all for the continued support. Let's jump into it. The Pictomancer at first glance can be rather confusing, so allow me to break it down for you. The first action you need to learn is your subtractive palette. What this does is affect your free basic spells. When this is not active, you trade off damage from mobility with instant cast spells. The resulting rotation begins with fire in red. This becomes arrow in green ending with water in blue. Now should you activate subtractive palette, you give up this bonus mobility for cast times and more damage. The main rotation then becomes blizzard in cyan, stone in yellow ending with thunder in magenta. Learning to correctly swap stances, based on the situation, is what will separate you from other Pictomancers. Not activated will allow you to stay mobile, and to give chase to fleeing targets. With your pallet on, you are going in for raw damage. Subtractive pallet also determines the next two instant cast abilities. With pallet off, you gain access to Holy in White. This deals 8,000 to all struck, while providing an 8,000 heal for yourself. Activate your pallet and you instead gain access to Comet in Black. Works the same way, only you trade off getting health, and instead deal 12,000 damage. For defenses, we have the Tempera Coat, a huge 12,000 barrier. Once active, this ability transforms into Tempera Grasser. This ends the effect of the first barrier, and resets it, only this time granting yourself and allies within range a 6,000 barrier. Very strong for when you get dove or need to push in as a team. For movement, nice and basic, we have the Smudge. This will dash you 15 yards in whichever direction your character is facing, and will grant bonus movement speed for a short period. Now this is where many players start getting confused. You have both the Creature Motif and the Living Muse. The Motif determines which spell, with each taking 3 seconds to paint. Once ready, your Muse ability will be ready to activate. For the Motifs we have Palm, Wing, Claw, and more. These become Palm Muse, Winged Muse, Clawed Muse, and finally Fanged Muse a four-part rotation that works the same way to the Machinist. You can only use them in order, and must cycle through. Motive 2 and 4, being Winged Muse and Fanged Muse, will also trigger off the effect of your Mog of the Ages. Winged Muse into Mog of the Ages will deal 10,000 in a straight line, and heavy any player struck. The fourth action Fanged Muse will upgrade Mog of the Ages into Retribution of the Madin. Madin deals 15,000 in a straight line, and this time around applies Bind so these combo off nicely with the Muse abilities. Palm Muse deals 4,000 to everyone struck, and will increase your damage and healing done by 20%. Winged Muse deals 6,000 to every player struck, while granting 20% faster recast timers, and a huge 25% bonus movement speed. Clawed Muse resets to a 4,000 damage to all struck. The damage taken by those players is increased by 10%, and at the same time their healing recovered is reduced by 20%. And last up is the Fanged Muse, dealing 8,000 to all struck. This will also apply damage over time with 4,000 per tick. One insanely powerful combo that I came up with is to first cycle through all four of the motifs until you have access to the Fanged Muse. Activate the Fanged Muse, unlocking your Retribution of the Medine. Now there is no time limit in order to cast this spell. Next, paint your Pom motif, so you have Pom Muse at the ready. Make sure your subtractive palette is on for access to Comet in Black and ready your Thunder in Magenta. Now this is where the big damage begins. Start with Thunder Magenta on your selected target. Follow up with Palm Muse, which will grant 20% more damage for 10 seconds. Fire off your newly buffed Retribution of the Medine, and spam in two casts of Comet in Black. And if your Limit Break is ready, throw that into the mix as well. Your Limit Break is Advent of Choco Bastion, which summons the Fat Chocobo, knocking back all enemies within a 10 yard radius. While inside the Choco Bastion, your damage taken is reduced by 25%, and you recover 25% more health. This will also grant you access to Star Prism, for a fast, instant 12,000 damage to your target and those nearby. Yourself and allies receive an 8,000 heal, within 30 yards of the selected target. 
as well as regen lasting another 12 seconds. With my power combo, Star Prison also gains the 20% damage boost. These combos allow you to rival the damage of the Scholar within Frontline. The match I'm about to show you is a huge 2.6 million damage as a solo player. For your strengths, for obvious reasons, you have Amazing Burst. This burst is set up with your motifs, granting you access to more instant cast abilities. These new abilities can be held, allowing you to set up the perfect attack. You can even shift between stances to become more powerful or to trade off some damage for more mobility. Speaking of mobility, you have one of the best in the game. As you are not required to target enemies or allies, you can escape in whichever direction you like. Meaning for those who despise the Dark Knight, you can now flee from Salted Earth with great ease. And not only can you self-heal, you also have one extremely powerful shield. Upon a second activation splits the shield between yourself and allies. This will also reset the timer, meaning you yourself can get up to 18,000 worth of shields. Your Limit Break's ability to dampen damage and heal is going to be of great impact for fighting against the Dark Knight metas, and possibly one of the best outcomes is the Pictomancer can do a well with any other role in the game. In terms of weaknesses, this is a role that of right now has very few. Your biggest being your motif. These take 3 seconds to cast each. In that time, you are of course more vulnerable. As more players begin to understand this, the more you will find yourself being dove. These same cast times can make you miss potential timings with allies, and being such a potent role, overconfidence will be the undoing of many who play Picto. Another weakness is not using the stance switch to make the most of a situation. Other than that, this role has the best bits of the other casters. The very first thing every Pictomancer should be doing, as soon as you get into a match, is ready your POM motif. That way I am ready to back up my Dark Knights, and to begin cycling through the 4 motif rotation. As we engage on the North Crystal, I am looking to position off to the side, while still in full view and range of the enemy. After using Palm Muse, I instantly begin charging the second motif. You have more than enough time to then use Wing Muse and Mog of the Ages, while still under that 20% damage buff. For targeting, I am generally looking for those squishy players, and for those who look to be falling back through their team. It is always easier targeting someone away from the group, who then falls back into the team, rather than cycle through finding someone surrounded by enemies. Overall, I am just trying to speed through the motifs, so I can set up the big damage combo I showed off earlier. The other thing to be tracking is your shield up time. Always engage with it, and before the timer runs out, spread it to those around you resetting the timer. And with the adders grouping up nicely in the choke, as both my palm muse and retribution are ready, now is the time to deal some big damage. Not enough to kill yet as the team are divided between the objective. However, this is enough to apply some pressure. This is also eating away at their MP reserves. In these long, drawn-out battles, the team that has no MP remaining end up getting steamrolled. Right as the Immortals move in with their flank, this is the situation you turn your planet off. Now you can give chase with instant cast spells. The Pictomancer is a class that is rewarded for preparation. I can now take this chance to ready the next motif. In active battles, you are at your weakest, as you will need to dip in and out in order to prepare the next combo. Your main strength is following in on dive hitting targets hard and fast before they have time to react. After some time picking off the stragglers, we then push east as a team. As we approach, I drop my limit breakdown for the damage reduction, and focus my efforts on the cluster of ice lickers. If the enemy team are focused on healing through the sudden burst of the damage I provide, there is a much higher chance they will not see my tanks and melee going in, paying off getting me that battle height too. I always say battle height is the key to winning matches, and here it is of no difference. A Pictomancer with that sweet battle high 5 is honestly insane. With the adders dropping and the pressure on, I need to be actively switching stances. Do not get too relaxed standing still. Being jumped when you are not ready results in a fast death, and here you can see me hanging around longer than I should. This is because I am confident in my abilities, allowing me to remain close enough to the retreating Dark Knight. As long as I stay in range, I can spread shields his way. The Pictomancer is also a solid pick for those of you who hate the Dark Knight's salted earth. As long as you do not spam your smudge on cooldown, should a Dark Knight catch you off guard with their drawing effect, just like a dancer, you wait for the effect to end, before freely dashing away in any direction you like. Add guard and purify into the mix, and you can also avoid the spam of crowd control and intense damage. Rotating now to center point, I have prepared my biggest combo, waiting to follow up on the Dark Knight. 
I fire off Pamuse and Retribution right as I believe he was going to pull them in. In that moment, he chose against using Salted Earth. So now I want to fall back and ready my Winged Muse. Do not worry about falling back further than you might think. As time goes on, good PvP players will actively dive a Pictomancer painting their motif, and now I am ready to follow in with Winged Muse. Again right now, there is too much diversion between combat and objectives, so as my team retreat, I drop my limit break, as I felt I was about to get dove by either the Adders or the Immortals sneaking up behind. The hardest thing many Pictomancers will struggle with is knowing when not to greed for kills. Play like a black mage. You exist to be a pain, and you want to create openings. As well as being highly oppressive, the more annoying you become, the more the enemy players slip up and make mistakes. Again, farm out that battle high five, even if that means you gain it for assists. The Pictomancer right now has some amazing carry potential, and I would not be surprised to see a nerf inbound. Skipping ahead to the next objective, you can spot my Dark Knight going towards their ramp. This is where we take the fight to them, focusing our main damage on those in the backline. This not only affects their impact around the objective, but has also cut many off from escape. I am not running in close, as in this scenario you can expect a lot of limit breaks to be coming your way. From this range, I am still more than able to follow up. Doing so got me two extra kills and that battle high fall. Keep note here that both of my Dark Knights get taken out, and I fall back ready to retreat, and once again spinning those shields to those around me. I'm going to end the voiceover for strategies here, as it is now very much rinse and repeat. To sum things up, firstly you need good positioning, prepare your motives before battles, and abuse the mass bind effect of Fanged Muse. You are now one of the best roles for backing up tanks. Take full advantage of this, resist the urge to greed for kills, and mix in your own playstyles, and before too long you yourself will be mastering the Pictomancer. Enjoy the remainder of this round, and see for yourself how I reach 2.6 million damage. Thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you all in the next one.